Hello and welcome to our webinar. I'm Andre, the founder at, C at Zero BI, <clears throat> and today I'll present the uh, three hyper-effective ways to consolidate your KPIs in Power BI dashboards. This is already webinar number 35 in the Zebra BI webinar series. I'm happy that we are diving into this important topic now. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive into our today's topic. All right, so the agenda, uh, 45 minutes today, plus the Q&A session at the end. Um, we will be presenting first, talking about the benefits of consolidating your KPS. What does this even mean? Why do we feel this is a, a, a best practice in reporting in Power BI uh, to consolidate your KPIs on one spot? Uh, what are the benefits of, of that? Why you should do this? Uh, we'll hopefully share some, some interesting examples, uh, you know, to inspire you to do that. But uh, most of all, we will this time uh, try to show you three ways of consolidating KPIs in Power BI. So we'll do this in three different ways. It'll be a practical how to, um, you know, how to cookbook recipe and I'll try to guide you through all the steps and we'll, we'll start very simple with the basic method uh, from an Excel file through, you know, uh, some unpivoting and so on. Uh, then we'll move on to Power Query, uh, which is, of course, a great, a great tool to, you know, for massaging your data, for transforming your data and will definitely help achieving some, some nice results here. And then um, the third method um, is, uh, uh, by using a disconnected table and DAX. So we'll do some, some switch statements and so on. And, uh, you know, all of those three methods have some <clears throat> pros and cons. Uh, the third one is actually the most powerful and you'll see that you can do quite, quite a lot. And uh, I hope this will help you build more flexible dashboards, um, more practical and, and actionable dashboards after you, you, you gain this knowledge. Um, and then once you know, you're able to consolidate your KPI on one spot, uh, then uh, the last piece of the puzzle is how to format the different types of KPIs in your dashboards and then you're done and then hopefully you'll, you'll end up with a really nice dashboard. So lots of practical examples today. Uh, we'll share the resources, download links and, um, and have a Q&A at the end. And yes, we are also recording um, uh, the session. So we will send out the recording after, after today's session. All right. So I'm Andre, the founder and CEO at Zebra BI. Um, so I'm the uh, Microsoft Most Valuable Professional, as well as the IBCS Certified Consultant. Um, and today we also have our um, BI Consultant, Mark Leskoshek here, helping me out with the webinar and also with the uh, Q&A at the end. He will follow up, follow up with your questions and so on. Mark, would you, would you just say hi to our audience? All right, so for, for some reason, I actually did not hear Mark, so hopefully everything is, is okay. Um, yeah, and let's, let's go on and then uh, hopefully everything will, will work also. Um, okay, so first of all, why do you need to consolidate your KPIs, right? So uh, actually the idea for this webinar started uh, after we have published this, um, I would say nice um, dashboard. Um, where you have a um, area with the different KPIs like EBDA and so on right here on, on the left side. So it's a, it's a you know, simple five, five KPIs with some comparisons and then all the other information, more and more details around this KPI area. But uh, this dashboard works in a way that you can simply click here on a card and now we are uh, looking at EBDA uh, details, you know, by business unit, by month with comments and so on. 
However, the user can click now on the on you know the second KPI, and everything else will be filtered. Uh, and then this is the third one. So as you see, uh, this the KPIs are consolidated here in one visual, but as well they are as well filtering all the other visuals, right? So which is a really nice nice way how to structure your dashboards. It's extremely user friendly and, and intuitive for the users because they can simply click here to filter and so on. And this is not really uh, what typically what we typically see in, in Power BI dashboards or, or reports, right? So so there we got a lot of questions, you know, you know, how to actually consolidate all of those KPIs so that you can use them in, in this way. So this is one example. And then uh, we have more examples today. So this is a, a CRM dashboard. So it's basically a sales funnel that, that follows the same principle. So this is one visual here with several, like again, five um, <coughs> uh, KPIs, uh, you know, one revenue, weighted pipeline and other types of revenue. Again, this is filtering all the other visuals on a page. All right. So, so with the um, um, instructions that we'll provide today or recommendations, hopefully you'll be able to uh, uh, build something like this in Power BI. Now, normally what we do see in Power BI is something different. Okay. So first of all, the tables in Power BI look typically like this. So you have a, you have a table and then you have a lot of measures. Like in this case, it's a very simple table, but I already have four measures like costs, gross margin, quantity, revenues, right? Typically it's, it's an explosion of, of, of measures. Then also the revenues, uh, the, the plan for the revenues and, and the previous year for the revenues and previous year for the quantity and gross margin and costs and plan for that, and maybe some other KPI. So you end up with a lot of measures here. Okay. And then how do you use them? Yeah, you just, bring them to your Power BI dashboard. So let's create a couple of cards maybe. So these, these are my costs now. Okay, if I need another card here, what do I do? Well, I do the same for the revenues, right? Click, 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 lots of clicking, lots of, you know, arranging the visuals around and so on. Of course you can copy and paste visuals to help speed up the process be more productive but still um you know it takes quite some time to let's replace this with this one and uh, the last one would be uh costs i already have so the uh, quantity right so all right so these are now four cards and then of course you create your charts so let's do this again for uh, with some charts. Uh, let's say a month here. All right, these are my revenues now. So another chart, copy paste. Copy paste is sometimes tricky in Power BI. So these are my revenues now. This will be my costs. And you get a picture. So the uh, process of creating the uh, <laughs> dashboard is actually quite um, time consuming. Um, but then there are other problems like, all right, let me finish this one. So, and the fourth one would be quantity in my example already. So this is, this is a very, very simple Power BI page, but typically we see this like, you know, uh, the KPIs here at the top. And now this is just a, you know, it's just a, a, a more or less a, a static card uh, that is not interactive. So you cannot now click here to filter other, um, you know, elements on, on the page, other visuals, other charts and tables um, and so on. So uh, it's very hard to, change a measure so if you want to display something else or not costs here right so you actually need to physically go into the edit mode uh you know change the design of the document really so and to throw out this 
a KPI and bring something else here, right? So um, it's very, it becomes hard to maintain and it's, it's not flexible really. Okay, so the other way would be, let me now show you another way, uh, which we will try to explain today. And this is, okay, this time I'll, I'll just use the Zebra VI card visual. And now I have another, uh, a different type of table. Okay, so I don't have all of my measures as separate measures, right? Instead, I have one measure for the actual. So, you know, one measure called the value. Just bring this in, right? And then all of my measures are actually uh, consolidated and collected in this one data field called KPI. And this is what we call a KPI dimension, right? So, so this, I just bring this, the KPI here, maybe so like in a card visual. So now you can use the multi cards. So basically you have all of your KPIs in one visual, right? So it's very you know easy to to work with them. Um, you can filter them. You can display just some of them by simply filtering and and so on. And of course you know this will now work with um, then uh, you know all the other dimensions like um, time and everything else that you may have. You can do still do the comparisons right because. The comparison is, is just a different business scenario, right? It's plan, forecast, and so on. But the KPI stays the same. The KPI is gross margin revenues and so on. So um, in order to um, build something like this, let's just try to make this a little bit, all right, nicer, okay? <clears throat> um, in order to do this, you need to, um, transform your Power BI model in a way to collect all of those measures into this KPI dimension, right? This is the essence of what we are doing today. And there are uh, benefits of filtering and so on that I already shown, I have already shown, and there are other benefits. Uh, certain visuals like our Zebra BI charts, uh, cards visual, now allow you to do certain things that are simply not possible if you have all of those separate visual separate charts you know as separate elements in in, in power bi namely um in our case here i can go ahead and i can actually scale three kpis for example so just you know instruct the visual to render them in the same scale so they they all share the y axis right so it's very easy to do here and this is another benefit. So I have scaled charts here. So now I understand that you know gross margin is is lower than revenues, which is normal, right? But I also see you know exactly how much smaller is it, right? Is it very small or you know and so on. So so with those visual comparisons, uh, the, um, you just simply allow the user to uh, gain better insight uh, into the data, make visual comparisons, and actually understand the data much much better. Um, okay, um, and then the last uh, benefit is behind the scenes, if you're building your dashboards like this with a lot of separate, you know, elements, visuals, what happens with your performance? Let's just quickly check this. I'll refresh the visuals. All right, now what is going on? Of course, Power BI nine now needs to load all of those visuals. Now I have seven of them, but typically there are much more because you have filters and, and pictures and then all the other stuff, right? And then you have maybe a slightly uh, slower data model, a lot of data, right? And and this can just explode from you know one second to 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 eight seconds and and twenty seconds and so on, which is already unacceptable for the end users, right? So so it just the performance suffers, um, right? Uh, whereas in this case, I just switch here, clear, refresh. All right, 72 milliseconds, milliseconds. One load time for everything, one render time and, and so on, right? So it's much, much, much faster if you have, uh, if you reduce the number of visuals on your uh, page, right? 
uh, on top of all the benefits that I have shown. All right, so that's what, why we are doing this, this webinar. And now let me show you the three ways of how you can achieve, how you can consolidate those uh, KPIs. Okay, so we said we'll start with a simple uh, uh, example from Excel, then we will move on to Power Query and at the end, uh, you know, handle the, the uh, a DEX, a few DEX tricks that'll help you do that. Okay, let's start with Excel. Okay, and um, this is now a very simple example to start with. So I have, uh, I have some dates here, um, and then I have my four measures. Quantity, costs, gross margin, revenues. All right. So this is, you know, a typical table, separate measures, separate data fields for, uh, and separate columns for uh, all the KPIs, right? So the basic operation that allows you to build this KPI dimension is called unpivoting. All right. So uh, if you're not familiar with that, um, Let's just show this in Excel. So one way would be if you if you're in Excel and have a table like that, you just go to data and we'll click here from table range, uh, which means that we will create a query that will actually turn those um, columns into uh, into one single column. All right. Um, what I have now, after you click there, you actually get the tool called Power Query. Okay, so if you're not using this, if you're still, you know, maybe a beginner or, or, or simply not using Power Query, uh, now is a good start to do that. Um, <clears throat> uh, what Power BI uh, uh, Power Query allows you is that, you know, you see your table and now you can apply many different types of transformations to, to, to this table. And the one that we actually need is called unpivot. So I could just select all the columns that I want to transform. And now <clears throat> by right clicking, you will find this, this option here, unpivot, unpivot columns. All right. What happens is, as you see here, uh, they are trans transposed and you will get one column which is basically your KPIs like quantity and so on. So all, all of your columns will be um, uh, um, consolidated in this one column. And then of course the value is here. So basically you just get, have two columns, your KPIs and the value. All right, so this was one way, actually a, an even better way, I, I just deleted this, so returning back to this, actually an even better way is to just select the column that you are not unpivoting, all right, this one. And now, instead of unpivot, you select this option, unpivot other columns, all right? So this is produces exactly the same result, but it's more safe because if you have, if you, if you at, at a later point, add another column, another KPI in your, you know, um, starting table here. So if you just add something else here, um, this transformation will automatically <clears throat> apply for additional columns and everything will, will work, right? So uh, let's just close this. And uh, yeah, see what you get here is a table in Excel, still in Excel right now, uh, okay, with this structure and this, we, we would probably just call this KPI, right? And this is the basic operation, how you unpivot your KPIs and now you will have them in this one data field, right, which is the basic prerequisite of what we are doing. All right, the uh, Power Query tool is actually the same in Power BI and in Excel. So basically the same thing that I did right now in Excel, you can do uh, in Power BI. So you can just connect to this table, uh, to this Excel table in Power BI and then do the same thing uh, uh, with the Power Query in Power BI, and we'll do that right now, but on a slightly more complicated um, example, uh, which uh, I have here. So this time, 
on top of my four measures, four KPIs, quantity, cost, gross margin, and revenues, I also have a scenario, right? So for, for every um, KPI, I have actual and plan, and then the actual costs and the plan, right? So what I want to do now is use this table as an input for a Power BI report. And this time I will not uh, do this uh, with a transformation in Power Query in Excel, but I will basically connect to this table from Power BI and do everything in Power BI, which is a better option, right? Because you really don't want to have, you know, doubled data here in, in, uh, in Excel, like, you know, your original table and then your transformed table, and then you don't want to <clears throat> have all of those steps, all, 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 all of this repetition is unnecessary. Um, okay, so we'll just connect directly to this table. But before we do, um, one more strong recommendation, I would say from, from my side, which is, the uh, um, uh, the tables wherever you are using Excel as a data source for Power BI, I recommend you to do one thing: click on the table and press Control T. All right. So basically, what this does is it creates an Excel table from your the values on your spreadsheet. All right. So I'll just do this and now this time I'll just say my table, I will just disable this. My table has headers because I have a strange situation here. Now the problem with this data now is now I've got an Excel table, all right? And we'll use this as a source for my Power BI. Uh, now the uh, complication here is this time it's not just a simple, simple table. It actually has a hierarchy on the columns, right? So I have the quantity and then actual and plan, right? So I have basically two two levels in my columns. And uh, so I have a quantity here. Now I have this empty cell here and so on. This is why this unpivoting procedure will now be slightly more complex, but I would say it's worth trying uh, because this is a, this is already a nice uh, table, I would say, where, where you can track your, you know, several KPIs against a plan and maybe also, also a forecast and so on and then have a date. So it's already a, quite a um, practical, practical example. So we'll, we'll just use this table and, okay, now I'll just save this. And let me just close this go to my Power BI and what I'll do is, i close this one um, and okay, maybe before I did that, it would be actually good to give the table a name just to make sure that we are connecting to the right thing here. So uh, when you have a table in Excel, you'll see also this table design and here you can actually name the table so let's just name it table from my webinar. All right. Okay. Now it has a name. It'll be easier to find it once we retrieve it into Power BI. Uh, okay. Back to my example here. Now, um, let's just remove this. Um, and also, this one, I will just remove it and try to recreate it now from the uh, table that we just created. All right, um, Power BI. Um, the uh, Power Query in Power BI is, is here, so we'll just start the uh, Power Query. And actually, uh, if you're if you're a beginner, um, if you just start at the beginning, then maybe the, the most simple way to connect to, to Excel is just to click here, uh, which is, you know, the action to import data from Excel directly. So it's probably the easier step. Uh, just find the, your Excel file. It's this one. Load it. 
Okay, now you see all of my items in, in my document. So this is my table. We named it table webinar. I'll select this one. Let's just load it first into Power BI. It should appear here. It's loaded. All right. So it's very weird right now. All of those columns, I just see it like that. So we need to transform it now. Uh, now I'll open the uh, Power Query. Okay, so this was my first table table webinar. All right, this is my table now. Okay, now it looks like a mess because I have this, uh, you know, hierarchy in my columns, right? I have two levels, actual plan, actual plan, and then I have quantity and some null values and so on, right? So, so for this example, what you need to do is first, uh, we'll actually transpose the table, we'll turn it around. So you have this, uh, action here uh, under the uh, transform tab. So we'll just transpose it. All right. Now I just rotated the whole table for 90 degrees. And what I have now is first column with my measures, second column with my scenario, uh, actual plan, actual plan, and then, you know, the values for, for each date. Okay. Um, first thing here, the pro first problem here are the null values, the empty values. Um, so you can easily solve this by filling uh, the content down. So this is one, you know, operation in, in uh, Power Query. So just fill down, and now I have all the rows here and, and so on. Okay, now this is better. So now I have all the values uh, here, and now I can just use the first row as, a, uh, as headers. Right, because these are actually my my headers, and they are they are not really the right ones. We'll need to re rename them. But now, okay, this is starting to look like a like a normal table. However, what we actually want to do is now just um, observe that this column here, this is already basically my KPI column, right? These are my KPIs, so they are already they are already uh, consolidated because I have transposed the table. However, we don't want to have all the um, separate dates here as columns, right? So we need to unpivot the dates. Okay, so I'll uh, just uh, select both the first two columns and I'll, I'll use the unpivot other columns. All right, so to unpivot all the dates, now I have all the dates back back here in one column maybe i could just move it move this here so this is my date now well already exists all right so let's first rename this one scenario this is my business scenario these are my kpis right and this is the value and this would now be the date all right of course, I probably need to um, set some uh, formatting options here. So this column is actually date, uh, value is a value. All right, looks okay. So let's close this and apply. Okay, we don't need the performance analyzer anymore. Okay, so now I have my table for my webinar and let's see if this works. Um, let's use the value here and now my KPIs, just put them here. All right, I have all my four KPIs, you see, move them around and so on. Um, I can also use the date see how it performs versus yeah, it has some monthly values and so on however what are the values now so if you have a table like like that where you have the scenario so i, I had actual and budget uh actual and plan data right so what i need to do now is i cannot just use this value column uh because it's everything is is here in this column and the values for the actuals and plan and everything right so i actually need to filter this 
Um, so that's why instead of the value here, um, we will just add a measure, okay? And we'll write a measure, uh, which will actually filter only those values that are actual, and then we'll have another one for the plan, all right? So uh, first the actual, I just uh, say, all right, my AC, I like to stick to, to those short abbreviations, AC, PL, FC, and so on for the scenarios, which is the recommendation of the IBCS standard. Uh, so uh, my actuals will be, let's calculate this. So calculate, we will sum the uh, value, right? Where, all right, this, where my scenario equals actual, I think it's probably actual in my data, should check this, but I guess it's like this. And I can now use this measure as the value, okay? And all right, I got some results. Those are now also the right actual values for, for all the measures. Now I just copied this and I'll just create another measure called the plan. Just paste this in and just rename it PL and we'll filter all the rows that are actually belong to the plan. All right, now I have another measure here and I'll just bring it into the plan bucket. Okay, now I have also, also have the uh, comparison, right? So it's a um, much better situation now. And again, I can just, you know, change uh, some of these. I can uh, group them together so that they have the same scale and, and, and so on, right? Um, all right. Okay, so what I end up, ended up with is a nice, very quick and very flexible report, uh, right? Uh, that is connected to my Excel table and has all the KPIs consolidated, right? So what I, um, now I can already use this. It's a very simple example, but you can already use this as a real time, you know, real life situation. If you have certain data that is not in your Power BI, in your data warehouses and so on, but this could be the technique how to do this. Of course, in the end, you probably just clean this up a little bit. So, you know, it's it's a it's a regular table um, where you can then just simply add the data or somehow link link the data from some from some other sources um, in Excel and 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 so on, right? Um, so it's a it's like a template. It works, and when you save this, refresh refresh the data here, you'll get new data into, into your Power BI. And this is the, the you know, um, the first way, simple way how to start with KPI, um, working with KPI in, in, in Power BI, I would say. All right, so this was example number one. Now, example number two, or the method number two is, uh, is a little bit more realistic, I would say, because let me close this and also close this, close this one. Uh, and my next example, we'll have more tables because in reality, uh, when you're dealing with KPIs, you want to bring the, the information, the data from the different KPIs that actually reside in, you know, different places, right? So you may have some finance, data finance kpis like like your revenues and costs and, and 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 so on in one table and then you might have some other types of information like your information from from the like website visitors and you know some marketing data in my case it's it's uh, web traffic so it's web sessions and 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 um we'll see what else like trial downloads and things like that then you may have some some data from your, your crm system like uh, or your billing system number of subscriptions and and things like that so so it's 
you know, and then you might have any any other data from from production and and supply chain and you know some ratings that are, reside completely somewhere else and and so on. So so you have all of those all of those um, tables, different tables, and in each table you have certain interesting KPIs, and you would like to bring all of those together, you know, and present them in this one lovely KPI dashboard, right? So how to go about this, okay? So uh, if we still stay in Power Query, what we will need to do is we'll somehow need to, you know, append all of those three tables into one longer table, right? So this is our second example, second method here by using the append. All right, so I'll use my three tables and let's go to Power Query. Okay, so now I have my finance. As you can see, now I have revenue, cost, gross margin, and so on. So financial data. And this one is already unpivoted, right? So on this one, I already applied this unpivot step. So, so I, I already have this KPI name, and KPI value. So KPI dimension is here. The scenarios are here, right? So this one is, uh, is okay already. Now the second one, the second one is different because it has separate columns. So my measure, so it basically has multiple measures, right? So I still need to unpivot this one, unpivot those measures. Let's do this quickly. Select this and then unpivot all the rest, which is unpivot other columns. All right, just to do this for practice. Now I have the same structure as here, right? So uh, KPI name value. And here it's okay, attribute and value. Let's rename this KPI name. Okay. For what we are doing right now, so merging or appending multiple tables, because I want to actually append all the three tables into one big table. Okay. Uh, when you want to do this, the condition is the structure of the tables needs to be exactly the same. So you know exactly the same number of columns the names and, and everything so all right this one is already um yeah this one only only has number of subscriptions subscribers basically all right so now uh how to append them um okay you have uh this uh command here called append queries if you open the menu you'll find append queries as new which basically will create another query with all the data um, okay this is what I want and I will append all the three tables so it's three or more tables here so you see you need to switch here to get this user interface now the finance is already selected now you just add other tables hit OK all right what I got here is one table that has the same structure but this time I have all of my KPIs, so my financial KPIs, cost, gross margin, and so on, but also, you know, sessions and trials and, you know, any other KPIs that you might have in other tables. It's all collected in this one big table. Okay. Uh, and it's everything is consolidated now. So I'll just uh, say, no, I'll just name it consolidated KPIs. All right, so by appending different types of tables, different tables together into one table, you basically consolidate your KPIs. Okay, once you do this, you'll get an additional table. Let's wait while it's loaded. All right, and now you have, in addition to your basic tables, this big consolidated table, now actually i duplicate it i actually duplicated all the data right because all the data that is here is also here and you know everything was um put together here so i i actually don't need those tables anymore right so so uh to to resolve this we can go back to Power query i just do one simple thing here so um we will not load the original tables into the Power BI model anymore. So how do you do that? Just click here, right click 
uh, on the original tables and just disable the load like that. RBI warns you, um, but we know what you're doing right now. So, okay, so basically just, just uh, pick off the option to enable load. All right, so these through original three tables will not be loaded into my Power BI model anymore. Uh, let's close and apply, see what happened. All right, everything is gone and it's replaced by one big fact table with my consolidated KPIs. All the KPIs are here and um, I'll just create this relationship so that my Calendar will filter this table. I also have certain products here that filter my KPIs, right? And this is now a very simple model with all the data consolidated in one big table. And yeah, let's just check if it works. Um, let's, uh, yeah, again, I have some values here. All right. And KPI names. All right. I got all my KPIs and uh, probably uh, the date should use this one. Okay, also has the date. And now again, I can create the, the you know, the plan measure, compare it to plan previous year and, and so on. All right. Okay, so this was the second method um, where you need to append several tables together. And now we are moving to the last, um, last method, which is how to do this in DAX. Uh, because, you know, uh, this method of appending in, in Power Query, it's not really universal. Um, there are many situations where you simply cannot append all the tables together, right? So it's, it's more realistic that you have very different types of tables and you just want to collect certain KPIs from one table and then you have a completely different different table with many other measures and a different structure even and you want to collect you know maybe three measures from that table and so on and so on so basically you need to pick pick uh you know your your data from from different types of table and merge them together into one table um and we'll do this now with the dax all right so let me close this example and let's See the last example. Um, well, it's loading, all right. Where again, I have my three tables, all right? This time they are uh, slightly slightly different. So you see certain, the first one has, has not so much measures. This one is much more wide and it has more measures and, and, and so on, right? So, so they can have completely different uh, structures okay uh, but what I will do now I will leave those basic tables here and on top of that create another table to consolidate my KPIs all right so what I'll do is I'll just click here and I'll simply create a new table in Power BI I'll call this table consolidated KPIs like this and now this table will basically be my unpivoted KPIs. Um, I will have two columns. The first one will first one will just be some ID of 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 my uh, KPI, like the you know number sequential number or something. And then the second one will be my KPI, basically KPI name. Okay, right. And this is a simple list of all of the KPIs that you want to consolidate. In your model right very simple just you know number one revenue right then number two you know other type of revenue number three costs number four something from a completely different table and so on so uh, the name doesn't even matter here so you can even rename use completely different names the, the, the important thing is that you'd list all of the kpis here and I also recommend that you do add this ID column so that you have a number that you, you can use for sorting and, and everything else. So I already have a list of these uh, KPIs here. So I'll just copy paste this. You don't wanna watch me typing for another five minutes here. So, you know, this is a table here. I could just load this table from Excel as well. So 
Um, I'm just trying to show you uh, a few different methods. Uh, so I'll just delete this and we'll just copy everything here. Ah, this one was the header, so delete this one. All right, so just a list of all my KPIs. Load this into Power BI and we will just leave this table as it is without um, relating it to any other tables, right? This will be an unrelated table and this is what is called a disconnected table in Power BI. All right, it's just a simple list. All right, but now how do we make it work you know, in our reports. <clears throat> okay, now I have this table, KPIs. Let's uh, maybe just, uh, let's maybe even create a table here so that you can see it. KPI, KPI name. So these are all of my KPIs, all right? Let's, um, it just shows number one because it's uh, counting instead of, all right, so these are all my KPIs, right? Then I also have some some products here. Let me just show, show, show this one, this table as well. So I also have a table with products. Just move it here. All right, okay. But what I want now is I actually need to calculate the data for all of these options here. Right, and how we'll do this? We'll we will add a measure into this uh, table. So I'll add a measure, and I will call it AC for actuals because this measure will return the actuals, the actual data for all of my KPIs here. So I have a lot of choices. So I need to switch between all of those choices and guess what the uh, uh, DEX formula for that is called, it's called switch, all right? So you need this switch DEX formula in order to do this and uh, we'll use the minimum. So now what we'll, we'll do is we'll just evaluate the KPI ID. So basically what is my KPI ID? Which KPI is it? Like this. And depending on the option, return the right results. Option number one is my revenue. So option number one, comma, and should return my revenue, which is actually in my finance table. Let me open this table. So it's actually, it's called AC revenue. All right. So the first one is AC revenue from the table finance, see? Okay. Let's do it like that. Okay, so this is my first revenue. Um, second thing, revenue from my finance, but this time it's revenue merchant, right? These are two products, okay? So, so what you can do now is you can actually invent new KPIs. So, so you can create new, new, new measures, new KPIs on the, on the fly with DAX formulas um, in, in, this, um, in this consolidated KPI um, table, right? So, so that's why it's a nice approach because you can simply, you know, calculate additional measures in the same table and just add them here. So, so this one uh, uh, will actually calculate, uh, we'll take our revenue, which is in the finance table, right? But we will also filter it by product. So where the uh, product equals merch, all right, so this is this product here. I could also say where product ID is uh, 46, which will be more safe. Uh, uh, but yeah, now for the sake of simplicity, let's do it like this. And then similarly, I can create another measure where I oops, copy all this. Uh, do this for another product. Okay, let's just 
see what happened now. Okay, let's see how far have we got now. I'm bringing in the ZBBI cards visual and I'll uh, use the AC. All right, my KPIs. I have my formula defined for three measures. You see revenue, second revenue, third revenue. We see that this one is smaller, so it's also smaller, so it looks good. Um, all right, and I can, uh, now I can keep adding those. And um, the calendar the calendar should work, so if I add month, I should only get some trends. All right, so this is nice. So you see everything works, and I basically now just need to add all the, the formulas um, to, to, to collect, collect the uh, data from the different tables. Um, so now I did that, that for the revenue, but I will also do it for costs and, and then also for the subscriptions, which are in, an, in the table of subscri subscriptions and then the web you know, sessions and trials and so on. So um, exactly the same thing. Let me just um, allow me just to copy and paste this because I have this uh, switch statement here. And uh, okay, we already have the revenue. And now number four will be costs, and then you know filtered costs and everything else, and up to the uh, subscriptions here. Okay, so number fifteen. All right, so this is up to number 15. Click, let's see if this loads all my data. All right, now my KPI dashboard is you know, being populated. Okay, and uh, a few more ideas here, just, just briefly. Um, okay, so now I just collected my data from the different table and filtered them. So this is one operation that you can do, but what, what is even more powerful now, uh, in this approach, you can create KPIs. Um, uh, you know, you can create cross calculations. So basically, you can take um, subscriptions that are in one table, and you know, um, or your revenue, and divide it by subscription. So that would be average revenue per subscription per user, basically, right? So, so you can simply do that and use it as my next um, KPI, uh, which I called RPU here, so average revenue per user. This is number 16. So how do I calculate it? Well, I'll uh, uh, take the uh, revenue. So basically, I'll just take the AC revenue and divide it by my subscriptions from the table subscriptions. This is, of course, all for the actuals, all right? Uh, see if it works. RPU. Okay, so the average is four hundred and something dollars, for example. Okay, and so on, right? So, uh, uh, in the same way, you can calculate the gross profits, gross profit margins, and you can just add anything that you can calculate from any of the tables, right? It does not matter where, where all the uh, data resides. Uh, so, which is what I have done here. Um, so, we can just copy. Oops, sorry. I should click like that. All right. And I've created 21, you know, uh, 21 um, KPIs all in one table. Uh, just pick the information from, from any, everywhere else in my data model. All right. So this is, my, this is my actual. If you want to do the same for the plan, um, then you need, again, another measure plan, forecast, and so on. So for example, you measure, all right, I, I just copied the same text and now I need to replace the actual with my, with the plan. And now, of course, this takes a lot of um, clicking, uh, but if you, if you press control D, uh, this actually finds all the occurrences of the same 
um, text. So you see a lot of AC, right? And I'll just replace this with PL. Uh, if you press Control D, uh, you, you have this multi selection here. And you basically just type PL and it'll just, you know, appear, it'll be overwritten in all of that. So basically, have your cursor everywhere. And this is how you replace everything at once. And the other shortcut is Control Shift L which will select all the occurrences in one go. And this is it. And this is how you create the plan, measure, and the final result is my, all of my KPIs consolidated in one table and with, you know, actual data and plan data for all the KPIs that you might have all across your, your um power bi model all right this brings me to the end of of my presentation uh so we saw the three options how to um consolidate the uh, data in power bi uh in order to collect all the kpis on one place display them in one visual um uh, of course uh, we hope that you'll use the zebra bi cards visual for that but uh, not only that, once you use these methods, um, the same, um, uh, you will gain the benefit of simply, you know, uh, allowing users to click for, to, to filter all the elements. And also you will have dynamic um, visuals where the measure presented here will change. So this, even the table or a chart, right, now has this generic um, measure called the actual, and it just um, shows the data that user has selected. So I did not put my, you know, revenue here and costs here and so on. So it's just the generic me measure that will change once uh, user filters, which is much more flexible and also the user experience of your dashboards uh, should be much, much better. All right, so uh, with that, let's um, take some questions. Uh, so I will ask Mark to help me with the questions. Um, hopefully we, we hear each other. And uh, while we are uh, browsing through your questions, let me just uh, uh, say, that the, re, the, the resources, um, this, uh, so make sure uh, to head over to the zebrabi.com and we have um, revamped our resources. There are so many resources here, so make sure you check the resources of the ZebraBI um, uh, on the ZebraBI website. We have all of the webinars um listed here you can search for them filter them so if there's 35 hours of recorded webinars here then there's the uh you know templates very useful templates here under help you'll see the power bi knowledge base where you have videos and tips and tricks for for certain you know for power bi dashboarding reporting dax uh, power query uh, visualization and so on. So make sure you check this and um, yeah, try the visuals as well. They are available. Uh, the ZBBI visuals are available on the uh, app source. Uh, so ZBBI charts, tables, and cards, three visuals, very nice. Uh, yeah, available for you on the Microsoft app source. All right, Mark, hit me with some questions. Um, so for, for some reason, I can't hear, uh, let me just check. Me now? No. All right, that's better. That's better, yes. Mark. I can hear you. Okay. Excellent. Great. Um, so, um, yes, so let, let's start with, with the first question. So which of these approaches is, is usually the best one? Yeah, um, I would say uh, once you get for for start, um, if if you are more of a beginner, 
uh, starting with Power BI and more maybe accustomed to Excel, I would say start with number one, start with a simple Excel table and, and, and you know, um, try to do recreate the first example and um, you will have a nice page you'll be able to refresh it and so on and then it's but it's for limited uh, a limited scenario otherwise i think number three is definitely the one that works uh, best in in real life situations where you have multiple tables and because it it, it allows you much much more control over the calculations um uh, you know you and and it it does not even affect your existing Power BI model, right? So uh, what I what I did here, uh, which is one the number three, right? So so when you when you take a look at this, right? So your existing Power BI model just stays the same, and you know you basically just get one more table, which is the collection of all the KPIs, and it's this this approach I would actually recommend for real life rollouts especially in bigger models and, and and so on right so so that's definitely my my recommendation go for number three if you're confident with the dex formulas yeah but it it, it pays off to learn a couple of dex formulas try to use, use this switch statement calculate a few measures so yeah definitely recommend this one so uh, in this DAX example, this, this ties nicely to the, the, the next question is how how to, do you manage the percentage symbols and, and uh, let's say currency values on the, on the same KPIs? Yep, a very good question, um, which is, uh, yeah, I actually uh, did not tell this, um, but I should. Um, yeah, the formatting of the KPIs, that's, um, that's quite a challenge. Uh, in in Power BI, so uh, with the Zebra BI cards visual, you have a lot of formatting options. So not just you know the visualization changing charts and so on, but for example, my my costs here, um, my costs are uh, fifteen percent, like in December, fifteen percent below the plan. Let's click here. Sorry, click here to change here. So you see, thirty percent below it which is um below the budget which is actually good right if the cost so i, sh I should actually invert this so that's why the uh, zebra bi has a couple of options here uh, you can invert the kpi but then you can also control the unit and the decimal places and the symbols and percentages and everything um on each individual card Okay, so we just set this uh, for each individual card. I'll, I'll just I'll leave my costs uh, in in um, millions, right? But for example, if we find something else like my um, let's say subscriptions or something like that, yeah, it could be. Um, now I don't have a percentage. Now if if I calculated my my um, gross margins or something like that, then I would just use percent here, right? So now, now I'm seeing those huge uh, percentages, uh, right? Uh, because it's not the right KPI, but basically you uh, format all uh, each KPI separately on each separate card. So you have complete flexibility here. I have this one without any units and just uh, maybe like that number of subscriptions and it's, it's like this and you know the next the next one will be different so i have complete control here in formatting on the visual itself yes exactly um there was also a question um um regarding the how can you show again uh how you can go back to excel with your uh with data from power query so that connectivity between Excel and, and Power Query. Um, okay, the connectivity. So what exactly is the, the, the question? So how you go back to Excel with the data from Power Query? Where, where you were showing the connection in Excel uh, for, for the tables. 
Oh, in Excel? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's uh, I just hope I also, understood the question. Also, uh, while Andre uh, is, is opening that, um, mm -hmm. yes, the, the uh, Power BI files and the examples will be shared with you. Uh, also, the recording will be shared with you after, after the session, so uh, you'll be able to see all of this. Um, also, there, I think there was a slight mistake um, in, in the copy and pasting of the DAX code. So there, there was uh, two times, I believe, the KPI was referring to the sixth KPI ID. But yeah, th th this was not intended. Um, they All should, right. yeah, yeah. of course, follow consecutively. Yeah. We'll send the corrected um, uh, examples and everything uh, out, the recordings and so on. All right. So, so the connection between between this. So, so if you once you do uh, in Excel, uh, the connection is like this. So, so this is my original data, and then uh, if I um, if I do some transformations in Power Query. So let's do this. Uh, let's do again this unpivot, right? Pivot at the columns and just close this. All right. So this is my, uh, whoops, where's the original? This is my original one. Original, this one is, you know, transformed and it's here in uh, created with Power Query. Now, what is the relation? Okay. For example, I go here and I add. another row with some data and so on now i go here so this 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 one now so this is now may quantities 170 you will not find this date i still only have april i don't have the may okay so it's not instant once you once you do do this with Power Query, you will not see instant changes in Excel, right? So you need to go here to this um, uh, to this table and refresh it. So like right click and refresh, and now I got uh, my new data, right? So you need to refresh it. It's much like much like uh, pivot tables, for example, right? You just need to refresh it. But then there are um, then there are ways like you know uh, refresh. You will see your connections, so you can refresh connections um, outside of the table, like like here, or refresh all connections and so on. But you need to you need to you know click hit refresh uh, to refresh it here, right? So that's why I actually prefer to keep you know the tables simple in Excel and do the uh, all the transformations in in Power BI. So use Power Query in Power BI because in Power BI then you simply click, click refresh from the Power BI report. Like in on this level, you know, you, you just click refresh here, which will now, you know, refresh the Power Query um, transformations inside Power BI and pull the data from, from your original table right okay. yes exactly um okay so one there, there's a lot of questions pouring in uh so let's let's just uh go with the next one so can you show dollar signs for dollar values on the cards yes uh absolutely you can so uh it, it is one of the options in the focus mode uh so there you have the yeah, different yeah. options you, you can also options, so of course you can currencies yeah also like um, this, like this. Do the access break and, and so on uh, so when, when you're scaling different charts uh maybe maybe you can also show this um and the axis break on on them yeah you can uh, you can apply the axis break uh so was there a question about the axis break and then scaling or uh, yes, I believe there was one. Um, so, but um, also, okay. So each each card shows the trend of one year. How did you define that, and how is it not going through the previous years? Um, yeah, this, this is now case, a question of the yeah. model. I um, I actually don't know if it's if it's currently showing. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it is just filtered for for the this particular year. But yes, you you could. Uh, yes. 
do this with external slicers or, or by using a filter? In this demo, it's just, uh, you know, this year is filtered on the whole demo on, the, on all the pages. But if you if you uh, don't have this, then, um, you know, use a, use a good calendar table. So we also have uh, uh, a webinar on creating calendars and, and time calculations and everything. And, you know, then you simply have put the year here and um, turn it into a slicer. Probably just a simple drop down works best. And just have it, have it like this. And now you can use this to filter everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and this, this also actually ties into the next question. So for the main dashboard, um, I believe it was the executive dashboard. Uh, are you using bookmarks so the visualizations update as you select the filter card? Actually, no, this is the no. default behavior of the cards. This is the default behavior. This is exactly um, this is exactly the huge benefit of consoling your consolidating your data and using um, those generic actual and plan measures, right? Because there are there are no. Uh -huh, sorry, this was PowerPoint. Uh, do I still have this example? All right, this is an interactive example. This is a Zebra BI card visual. It's just one visual that is placed here. This is a Zebra BI table. And this is a Zebra BI chart visual. So, so it's, this is only three visuals. It's only three load times and so on. And when you click, there's no bookmark, or I should click here. <clears throat> there's no bookmark that is now changing changing this table from from you know EBITDA to EBIT or to net earnings and so on <laughs> because uh first of all our zebra bi cards visual allows this really nice filtering by clicking so it simply click once and you know this sets the filter for this kpi right and now because this table or this chart uh, uses the same a consolidated KPI model, it will automatically um, change uh, when the KPI is filtered, all right? Because it does not have um, uh, a fixed KPI, like I did not add revenue here or just EBITDA as a measure uh, into this visual. I added this generic measure that uh, returns different KPIs, right? Um, and it's done in the, exactly the same way as I have shown uh, before, right? In my three examples. So in, in all the three methods, if you'll do it like this, uh, this will be the result. So you'll just be able to filter uh, and switch your KPIs dynamically on the front end in the visual. Okay. Um, the next question, uh, is there a way to control the red-green default? Uh, I understand that some forms of color blindness have issues uh, with those colors. Orange and blue work better. Uh, do we yeah, have support course. for that? Of, co of course, of course. I mean, there are, uh, in, in Zebra BI, you have lots of, um, <clears throat> you have a ton of options, of course. This is just, a, this is just the default, which is actually, uh, which comes from the IBCS recommendations. Um, but, uh, you have different, we even have colorblind friendly, but you know, uh, defaults. So, so you have a lot of uh, different defaults like pure IBCS and, uh, the different styles, but then you can just, um, you know, set this to custom and you can just have like uh, blue for positive and like maybe more RNG. Um, this is better for people with, with color efficient deficiencies um and and so on so of course yeah you can have started completely different neutral color and, and and so on right so just keep it functional you know of course you can you can have um, magenta charts and so on maybe maybe nice but uh, uh keep it functional still <laughs> yes and and there were, were a few questions uh, regarding the dax method and the performance um but in general using using one visual for for display of all the kpis it should 
vastly improve the performance, regardless of, of any of the, the three methods that, that you're using. Um, yes. But next, of course, uh, optimizing the DAX measures behind it, th th that of course uh, ties yeah. into this, but, but regardless of, of uh, the method, the, the having all the KPIs in one visual is superior to any any other. Type yeah, of... definitely. I mean, in uh, the performance in Power BI is, uh, is it's it's a huge topic, but it boils down to two things really. So so uh, first is the uh, model, the Power BI data model. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where typically eighty percent of performance issue lie, and the other like or seventy or something like that, right? So and it's not really the uh, it's typically just the logical structure of your model. So basically, uh, if you stick to uh, the, uh, let me show this maybe with this this one. I'm not sure if this one has. All right, this is this is a star schema with an edit table for comments because we have dynamic comments here. But do we have an uh, maybe this one is a pure star schema? Which I well voila. This is a pure star schema. This is the best, still by far the best model in, you know, organization of your uh, Power BI model. If you do have a star schema, um, then, uh, you know, and meaningful uh, hierarchies in, in dimension tables, uh, you know, that's step number one um, that typically res resolves 50%. If you don't have this, if you, if you're, model looks like you know lots of tables with lots of lines going you know like a spaghetti thing when you look at it it's not good so turn it into a star schema and you know um, it's like um, you'll probably solve the performance issues um, but then of course the calculations and the number of data and so on so the uh, switch statement is not uh, is not um, is not um, it, it's it's a very safe option because switch statement just basically, you know, um, um, it's it's just one. It just switches the the the, the measure. It's 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 not something that would um, cause uh, performance problems. Uh, but then on the other hand, like the you know the second part of that is the front end. Um, you know this part, which um, uh, and here the most typical problem is too many visuals. Like everything, including you know things like logo types and 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 things like this, everything that you have on a page, and most people also have like like I don't know thirty filters and stuff. So each element that you add to your page, of course, you know uh, it costs uh, in in time. So uh, because the visuals are waiting for each other, and if you are able to put five um, KPIs. You know, five things into one visual versus uh, five, uh, five separate charts or cards or whatever you have um, is, is at least five times faster, typically more. Yeah. So, yeah, it pays off definitely. Um, also, uh, one, one of the, the questions was uh, regarding. Uh, when will the Zebra BI card be certified? And another one was uh, exporting of the cards into PowerPoint report gives, in my case, blank squares. So these two questions yeah, are actually is, uh, tied yeah. to one another. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I'll let Andre explain it. Uh, yeah, the cards visual is, um, uh, <laughs> it's hard to say when, because this depends on Microsoft, but it, it, it already passed the certification so, and the version that passed the certification is already um, uh, is already live in the app source. This is this this version. Um, actually, it's this version, right? Um, and now it's just waiting for the deployment of the certification features, uh, which is export to PowerPoint, export to PDF and email subscriptions. So it should be in maximum 10 days. And we don't know, could be today, could be tomorrow, <laughs> uh, could be in 10 days. Yes, very, but, very, uh, very soon. Well, once, once, once it will be certified, the export will work uh, correctly and, yes. and 
all, all the other functionality for certified yes. visuals. Yes, yes. Export to PowerPoint, PDF, and email subscriptions. This will this will just start working. So you know, just press press export again in like maybe next week or or two weeks after after today, and uh, you you should uh, you should get uh, all the visuals into PowerPoint. Um, okay, so the next question was, uh, can you use also these methods uh, on the standard Power BI visuals for consolidating the KPIs? Um, yes, yes, you can definitely. So uh, this is a Zebra BI visual, but um, you know you can just use the matrix, this matrix. So and it will also work. So you see that this is one revenue. This is weighted pipeline. You know it's just changed here. So you definitely you can use this, uh, and then you can use the filter. Um, like the KPIs, KPI name, you can put it like in columns. Let's see, now you have it. So this is the standard, standard Power BI matrix or standard Power BI table. That just, uh, yeah, it's just that uh, Zebra BI tables is basically, is basically the Power BI matrix on, on, on steroids. So, you know, but you see, so with any of the visuals, you can take advantage of, of these methods. Indeed. Um, okay, so I believe there, there's a lot of questions uh, that, that still need to be answered. Um, yeah, can we, we need to wrap it up. So maybe yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll need to wrap, wrap it up. Yeah. One really nice one for the end. <laughs> okay. Um, so. how we can do <laughs> okay so there how can we make three comparisons like actuals plan previous year and all three compare at this at the same time it is just as simple as adding them into the placeholder bucket uh yes <clears throat> yes definitely so um do I have an example? I think here with this consolidated. So see this one already. This one already has actual and plan and forecast. So without the forecast, let me just maybe show this one. Now. So for example, that this, uh, but this this is now something that Zebra BI visuals do. This is not something that that regular uh, visuals or, or Power BI matrix would do, but. Um, in the Zebra BI visuals, uh, you have dedicated buckets for that. So you you have the uh, you see the you put the actual here and the values that you put. Then you can put your previous year here in this bucket, and then you have the bucket for plan and forecast. And you can even use multiple versions of forecast. So you can have plan uh, forecast and plan. So you can have your outlook and your plan, and then you have forecast one, two, three, and you can just throw everything into Zebra BI visuals. Uh, they will handle this because they are. Uh, just been developed for, for this purpose of, of business reporting and so on. So, so this is without the uh, plan. So this is just one measure. It's just just actual sales, so just a simple chart, and then you put your plan inside, and immediately Zebra BI will calculate all the uh, you know the changes, um, the variances to plan, and present them here and so on. And then if you also have the forecast. Zebra BI will actually detect where is the end of the uh, actual, so which is the actual uh, month, right? And then for the rest of the year, it will show the forecast and things like that. And then you can just use multiple forecasts, multiple plans, multiple values uh, here, and compare also this to previous year and so on. So lots of comparisons. Okay, excellent. Um, I think we, we, we better wrap it up. Uh, we'll try to yep. follow up with, with all the unanswered questions um, offline. But um, in any case, thank you, Andre, for, for an excellent presentation. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And, Thanks. Uh, yeah. Thanks, every, everyone. So, uh, yeah, we'll follow up. Uh, we'll, write, we'll write back um, for, for everyone. And uh, if you still have questions, um, follow up with, with us. So this is my uh, email or LinkedIn uh, and um, 
probably the best way is just to follow our, our web page uh, on, on LinkedIn um, and uh, you can find us on Twitter and, and YouTube. So just reach out to us and, and we'll, we'll, we'll respond. And then see you at the next webinar.